What do you do when you are a crook? And then one day your crook friends leave you for dead. And then, well, you think you're gonna die. You become a superhero. That's what Plastic Man did. Let's see what we got. Hello beautiful geeks, how is everybody doing today? Welcome to the Geek Fortress, Lewis here coming to you once again with a comic book quickie. And welcome to Comic Book Quickie, the only place where Speedy Gonzalez and the Roadrunner meet for drinks once a month. Seriously, they're over here somewhere. Today we're gonna talk about Mr. Good Old Plastic Man. For those of you guys who don't know who he is or are not too familiar with him, I'll refresh your memory with this picture. His first appearance was in Police Comics number one, and that was all the way back in August of 1941. He was created by Jack Cole, who was a cartoonist, a famous cartoonist of the time. He's the one who created him, and he was like, let me make some cool guy. Kind of like Jack Dawson, painting Rose in the Titanic. His real name being Patrick O'Brien, or known as his crook name as Patrick the Eel O'Brien. See, they're already throwing in there some hints. Eels, they're like slithery, and he's going to be slithery soon. <laughs> Gotta love these, see? They do have characters with the last name Frost who have ice powers. In the original story, our good old man Patrick started his life as a crook. That's right. He was named he was known as the Eel because he was slithery and he could get away with stuff. He lost his parents when he was only 10 years old. And he was forced to live on the streets because, you know, child support didn't take over. Child services, that's what I meant. Unfortunately, he fell into a life of crime because he had to survive the streets, and if you want to survive the streets, you gotta become tough. As he grew up, he became part of this organization, or whatever you call it, a whole bunch of bad guys get together. But not like Legion of Doom type, but I mean like a whole bunch of robbers and like thieves. Well, he became part of this uh, ring of bad guys. And uh, he was specialized as a safe cracker, so he was really good at cracking safes, getting the gold out, and getting the heck out of that place. That, that was the main entree on his menu. On one good faithful night, they were going on another heist, and they were at Crawford Chemical Works. They were there going to steal some stuff, money, you know, the use. And in the middle of everything, a night guard found them. Again, this was late at night if I didn't mention that before so everything is dark and then they start sharing bullets he shoots this guy the other one shoots this guy and he ends up getting shot in the shoulder that's where he got shot so in the middle of it there's also holes everywhere in these chemicals and he gets doused with this chemical that goes into his bloodstream that can't be good news maybe it is even with his injured shoulder, he tried to make it out to the streets. And when he gets out, he sees that his boys, his homeboys, they're gone. They were like, uh-uh, we out. <laughs> so after this WTF realization, he was like, I better run away. So what he does is he starts running and running through the woods or through whatever he finds. And he ends up passing out from the shot. He walked so far that he made it to the end of, um, think of like a mountain. You have a big giant mountain, and then you have a, um, foothills, you know, mountain near a city. So right there, lucky for him, nearby, there lived these monks. And what happened was, one of these monks found him, took him back with him, and treated his wound. Police officers actually showed up to the door of this monk. But the monk was like, you know what, I think this man can change. I'm not going to rat him out. Either that or the monk probably thought that when he got up, he was going to kill him. In either case, 
He didn't tell the cops that he was there. When our good friend Patrick wakes up, he finds out what happens, and he's like, you know what? Monk buddy, I need to turn my life around. This life of crime is not for me. I'm just gonna be a goody-goody now. I'm not gonna do anything bad, and I'm gonna follow the straight path of the law. The law. Before he left the monastery, however, he found out that he could do things with his body that not everybody could do. He could stretch at great speeds, he could make shapes with his uh, body. He could, um, kind of like Mr. Fantastic for those of you who know Fantastic Four, he could do things very stretchy. He could make himself turn into shapes such as balls and other things. And when he discovered this, he was like, Oh, and for those of you wondering, by the way, did you know that he actually came out way before Mr. Fantastic did? First appearance of the Fantastic Four was in Fantastic Four number one, which was in November of 1961. And we have my good home slides who came out in August of 1941. So 20 years before, we had Plastic Man. So take that, Marvel. I'm just kidding. I still love you, Marvel. And Disney. Mickey Mouse. You know. Pirates of the Caribbean and the princesses, especially the princesses. I was thinking of being Moana for Halloween this year. I meant the character that The Rock plays. That's what I meant. Not Moana. But Moana. After finding out his awesome powers of stretchiness and malleabilityness, if that's even a word, he decided to put it to good use. Right away he was like, I'm gonna be a superhero. So what does he do? As most superheroes, he puts red spandex on and really cool sunglasses. <laughs> that's that's how he goes out and fights crime. And he does a good job. I mean, he can make his mask change, he can punch people, he can choke them, kind of like an anaconda. So he became a hit. And the rest is history. He was one of the first characters ever to tell stories differently by introducing humor as well as you know a little quirks quirks hidden there that people would find funny in a comic book you know people were used to all these stories of Superman fighting Nazis or Captain America and all of that and then you have this guy going around hitting on girls while he's stretching and for all the pervs out there yes he can stretch anywhere anywhere and everywhere did you know that he was one of the signature characters during the golden age of comic books like I said he was known for the sub humor and he was different he had a short series back in 1960s which didn't which didn't go too far he was made a member of the Justice League back when Grant Morrison was writing the title he um the story uh, there was a story arc called uh, Rock of Ages where basically what happens is good old Batman recruits uh, Patrick to go into Lex Luthor's uh, house or building or whatever he had at the time. And um, it, um, it was something that Luthor called the Injustice League. So, yeah. So he had uh, Patrick the Eel go in there and see if he could get some plans. So Batman asking for help from Patrick the Eel O'Brien. Take that one, straight to the bank. Keep it there, lock it. If you want to find him nowadays, you could find him in the animated series Batman, the Brave and the Bold. They like to pair him up with Batman. I guess it's like opposites of tracks. You have a funny guy, you have the most serious guy in the world who won't smile to save his life. So I guess they look good together. But you can find him in Batman, Brave and the Bold. He's also appeared in other uh, series, um, comic book series such as Black as Night. And he's also been in um, short-lived DC series. Um, Saturday morning cartoons mostly, but you have seen him before in cartoons. And if you have not, you should really look him up a little more. If you read Black as Night, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In Black as Night, he actually had his heart turn out. Torn it. Boom. And eaten by one of the Black Lanterns. But... Because of the way his physiology works, 
he didn't die. He was very, very ill after that, and he had to be taken to Star's lab so that they could take care of him and analyze him and all that. But shortly after, he came back, and they were never really like, oh, what happened to his heart? No, they just kind of came back. I guess his heart just grew back. I don't know, man. I don't know. He has often been um, shown as a ladies man because he's always hitting on Power Girl or Wonder Woman and you know, with a man with the abilities that he has, I don't blame him. He's got that to his advantage. Good job, sir. Good job. So what exactly are his powers other than stretchiness, you know? Well, he has complete control over his whole body structure, which means he can, like I said before, he can turn himself into anything, any shape that you could think of. I mean, it's gonna be a red and yellow shape with sunglasses on, but hey, he can do it nonetheless. Elasticity and plasticity, which is an obvious one, because, you know, he's plastic man, he has size alteration, that's right, he can make himself bigger, smaller, because he can control his body. He can do shape shifting, believe it or not, because he can take form of objects. Um, we haven't seen much of him going in, you know, form of people, but he kind of has that mystique effect, if you want to think of it that way. Superhuman agility, of course, because he can just bounce around and bounce around and leap tall buildings, and, you know, do things like that, which also gives him super strength because he can manipulate the mass of his muscles with his stretchiness, and he can just, you know, wrap himself around a car and then whoosh, shoot her across, kind of like a rubber band or something. Plastic man. You could say he's also has invulnerability. You shoot him, stretch, boop, bullet goes right out. And apparently if you rip his heart out, he'll come back, no problem. So yeah, the man is basically, you could say, immortal because he hasn't aged a day ever since the accident happened. It's also good to know that he has a non-physical, well, it is physical, but it's no organic, I guess the word would be. His mind, his brain is not organic, so he is immune to telepathic attacks which is great especially in a world of superheroes and supervillains which can do a lot of things such as telepathic attacks his organs are also rubber so he's got a rubbery liver you should go to the doctor sir you really should and because of his background as a criminal he's actually a really good detective he can think as a criminal and a superhero so he's helped people before solve crimes as well as murders and guess who he has helped a bad man so what do you guys think about plastic man let me know in the comments below what you guys think do you know that he came out before mr fantastic did you not know that it's all right a lot of people don't so don't worry about it but dc and marvel have been ripping each other off for his centuries maybe not centuries but many many years decades so it's okay if you didn't know but now you do Congratulations, you are a little bit more comic book smarter, and that is good. That's what we do at the Geek Fortress, ladies and gentlemen. We teach. And, you know, we also make fun of us and other stuff. But you get the point. Once again, thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Do not forget to stay awesome. Please like the video, subscribe. Again, leave a comment if you like what you saw, and if you didn't, leave a comment as well. We're good, we got thick skin, we ha we're like Plastic Man, you know, we can control our molecules, and, you know, make it stronger. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet, guys. Do me a favor, guys. You or guys are awesome, so please stay awesome, and whatever you do, geek on. See you guys soon. Bye.